technology. So, on image sensors specifically, uh, we are focusing on specific areas that you see here. The medical and dental x-ray sensors, which are very large uh, sensors for different medical, dental, and also non-destructive imaging applications, could be also for sports. High-end photography, uh, which covers cinematography, broadcasting, DSLR cameras, Industrial machine vision cameras, which are basically what we call global shutter sensors or global shutter cameras. Uh, and then fingerprint for cell phones and time of flight for 3D mapping uh, application. So I put in red frame those that I think might be interesting for the sports industry. And I'll try to convince you in the coming slides. The first one is the industrial machine vision, and you'll see that industrial could be a very wide area, including sports, and also time of flight 3D. So if I look at the CMOS imaging technology market uh, that actually replaced almost completely the old CCD technology, I think that CCD technology is responsible today to about 1% of the image sensors all over the world. And so, so CMOS became the only uh, technology for imaging. And if we look specifically in the industrial market, we are talking about 1D and 2D imaging, 3D imaging, hyperspectral uh, imaging that I, I, I think that Sabine would say something about it. Uh, infrared imaging, uh, which is not based on silicon, but in, in a different way, and X-ray that I mentioned earlier. Now, if we talk about the global shutter pixel, and I'll explain in a minute why global shutter is so important for the sports uh, applications. Um, so we have us as the manufacturer of the wafers, the inventors of the pixels and the pixels technology. So you see on the left-hand side at the top corner, the cross section of a global shutter pixel that we make. Uh, you see in the middle, a snapshot of portion of a wafer that shows many, many sensors on one wafer. This goes into our direct customers, which are the sensor designers and the sensors makers who sell their products so the to the camera makers. And the camera makers are mainly the industrial camera yeah, makers right. like Basler, Teledyne, Cognex, JAI, Omron, Toshiba Tele, etc. If we look at the sensor providers that supply to camera makers, you see many different people in the sensor providers area. And for the high end, like Teledyne E2V, Teledyne Dalsa, uh, G-Pixel, uh, those are making their products with us. Of course, Sony is a completely different story because Sony is an IDM. They make their own sensor, but also their own cameras and also on semi uh, AMS that also makes the, the, the make the, the sensor with us. And they sell to the known industrial camera makers like Kians, uh, Seek, uh, uh, Omron, Basler, etc. If you look at the roadmap, uh, we started, we were the first one to develop Global Shutter Pixels now it's quite common in, in the world, but we still are the major provider of global shutter technology, except for Sony, of course, which is not using a, a foundry. They make their own products. Uh, so we started back then in 2007 with five micron pixels, global shutter, and then moved uh, to a 3.6 micron pixel, uh, with uh, Intel, we made the, the uh, uh, Intel uh, 
um, 3D uh, camera based on, on this uh, pixel. Then we moved to 2.8 micron pixel and our latest and greatest one is a 2.5 micron pixel. This is the smallest pixel in the world in charge domain. And charge domain is very important because charge domain means very, very low noise and per high performance in low light uh, conditions. Now we came to sports. So what you could see here is the difference between rolling shutter camera, which is most of the cameras in the world, definitely including all the cameras in your cell phones, but also very, very expensive high-end uh, cameras like uh, broadcasting cameras or even cinematography cameras. Uh, and you could see immediately what is the problem. With a rolling shutter, the pixels are collecting the light from the scene line by line. So although the time interval for each pixel is exactly the same in length of in, in time domain, the time itself is different. The first row sees a scene much earlier than the last row. And that creates artifacts that you could see immediately with a golfer here uh, that the, the golf stick is bent because of the rolling shutter camera. So with fast uh, scenes, there is a need for global shutter in order to prevent all these artifacts in the camera. And by the way, if one wants to prevent rolling shutter uh, um, artifacts without using global shutter, the only way is to have extremely, extremely high frame rate. But high frame rate would uh, not allow getting enough light into the camera. So global shutter becomes a must. And now we are working with high-end camera vendors on global shutter sensors. Uh, it took many, many years for global shutter to get into performance that is equivalent to rolling shutter in terms of noise level and dark current level of the pixels. And now we believe that we have the best in class technology for global shutter pixels. Okay, sorry. Um, on the X-ray area, on the X-ray area, the X-ray is uh, is mainly related to medical applications like a, a fluoroscopy um, and surgery applications, but also a, 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 a dental applications, intraoral and also extraoral application. You see. Uh, in this picture, you see wafer with one big sensor that takes the whole wafer area. And this is a 300 millimeter wafer. So you can imagine this is a sensor of 21 centimeter by 21 centimeter. And the reason why it's so big is because X-ray do not have any optics. So it needs to be a one-to-one -one, um, imaging. This also could be uh, thought of as a nice sensor for sports area. Um, if we want to do some analysis of bones uh, in action uh, with very, very minor X-ray dose uh, during the, the uh, taking the pictures. Uh, another application is a time of flight application. Um, this is mainly used by us for the uh, commercial market, like the cell phone face recognition and also 3D mapping of the room. But in sports, it could be a very interesting uh, camera that could map and give a real-time 3D mapping of the athlete or of the area uh, where uh, around around the outside. Uh, on the non-imaging sensors, we have many different technologies and we call them platforms. So we do not 
take a sensor specifically, but we have different types of platforms on top of which one can create many different types of sensors. So we have a platform for remote temperature sensing, uh, which is extremely, extremely uh, uh, sensitive and extremely accurate. We have another uh, platform that could do a temperature integral over time. We have another platform using what we call floating gate that is measuring radiation. It could be UV radiation. Uh, it could be also um, radon radiation, X-ray, whatever. Magnetic sensors, uh, this is also a different platform. And finally, gas and humidity sensors um, based on open gates with some radicals on top of those gates. And lastly, on displays, we are developing now with uh, leading customers, unique displays, uh, which are called micro OLED. Actually, we are doing two types of technologies. One is micro OLED, the other is micro LED. And the common denominator of those high-end displays are the pixel size. If we are talking about really uh, high-end displays uh, that we could see, for example, on cell phones, the pixel size of a cell phone is roughly 80 micron. We are talking here about pixels of a size of three micron. So you can imagine three micron pixel would be 10 micron square, while 80 micron pixel would be 6,400 square. So it's a resolution which is almost three orders of magnitude better than the resolution that we have on a cell phone. And this could be said in many different areas, but specifically on, on the VR market to create a, an extremely, extremely high resolution VR uh, goggles that would create a real VR, a real reality, uh, uh, if you will, on your glasses, unlike the, the goggles that are being used today that one can see really the curtain effect, which is basically seeing the pixels and don't have the real VR uh, um, experience. Uh, this, especially for sports events, is uh, extremely important because of two reasons. One is quality of the image that anyone wants to have very, very good quality of an image. And the other one is the dizziness. Right now, because of the low resolution of the existing goggles, the, um, after wearing those glasses for 10, 15 minutes, uh, one gets a, a nauseous just because of the movement of the non-real movement on the, on the, of the image and the low resolution. With high resolution and high brightness that we develop, um, one can wear those goggles for a full day without feeling any headache or any nauseous from, from, the, from wearing those glasses. So this is a kind of a summary of what we do. Uh, and, and of course, uh, this is limited to about 15 minutes, so I cannot talk more about technology, but everyone who is interested is uh, more than welcome uh, to contact us and, and get more information. So thank you very, very much. Yeah, I'm back. So thank you, Avi. Thank you very much. It was, as said, uh, we exp I put high expectations and you answered them. So it was fascinating. Uh, I, I've heard you several times and again and again. Um, I think it would be great also to share uh, any contacts or if you guys participants would like to contact our semiconductors. So you have my, you have my access and uh, my email and I will share later on uh, to pass to the team over there or Ruti, if you'd like to share your email on the chat, that would uh, be uh, useful. Okay, so. I put some questions in the chat. Uh, he could maybe address those later on or if he could, uh, when he gets a chance, thank you. 
Thank you, Jeffrey. Oh. Thank you, Jeffrey. I liked your background. I don't know if it's a real background or not, but it uh, is a real background. It's a real background. Ooh. Tell us something about it. This is my circus tent. We're at eSports Circus. We do uh, 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 on premise. We go out to colleges and host giant eSports events with the real circus tent. We go out, we do all Amazing. kinds of sporting events, robotics. It's fun. Great. You can see about it. I put my contact information in the chat so you guys can see what I do there. Amazing. I don't Amazing. want to take Thank up time you. with the valuable speakers, but. <laughs> Thank you, Jeffrey. Amazing. Uh, and with that, I will also welcome, I'll see among the participants, the guys from the Innovation at Nike, Innovation at Under Armour, our guests from the STM. So to share that uh, soon we will open some marketing for Colosseum. We'll open our next sports tech management for the executive program. Uh, some of our uh, graduates are also here participating. Uh, so I will share a link uh, on the chat for that, for those of you who would like to join our sports tech management executive program. So uh, I would like to welcome our amazing panelists representing Extro, Dero, Samsung, and a uh, friend of her. So Sabine, Adi, Igor, and Ziv, please. Fernanda will highlight you and we will uh, start. Meanwhile, you can see uh, Tower Semiconductors. You have access to routing. Uh, so you'll be able to uh, contact Ruti for any question that might raise. Fernanda, you're highlighting us. Yeah, it should be highlighted by now. <laughs> okay. Um, is it? Is it? Yeah. Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, great. So, um, Igor, Ziv, Sabine, Adi, how are you today? Yeah. One, by one. Yeah, one by one. Yeah, one by one. Don't run. Don't run. <laughs> nice to meet you, Oren, and uh, happy to be here. Igor from Ero. Great. Hi, nice to meet you. Also happy to be here. It's a bit hot. I'm outside. Nice. Yeah, so great to be here. Um, it's not hot. I'm in Germany. <laughs> we have the winter back in, back in town, so to say, but uh, it's a great pleasure to be here. Thank you. And Ziv, can we hear you? Hello from Israel and thank you for inviting me. Amazing. So let's start by our friends from Samsung. Samsung is a leading manufacturer in wearables, sensors, and how is gear sport improving, improving uh, the way we uh, practice sports? What kind of data is uh, the uh, band collection collecting? Uh, if you can share with us. Sure. So first of all, uh, it's not gear sports. It's called the uh, Galaxy Watch or Galaxy Watch Active. Um, so the watch uh, is kind of combination of uh, high-end uh, status symbol, uh, wellness, fitness, health, and uh, sports uh, uh, device. We just uh, um, announced a collaboration with Google to move to the Wear OS from the next watch, the, uh, the operating system that competes with, with Apple's. So I hope we'll have much more apps and services. A uh, good example to show uh, how we, what kind of value we provide uh, to our users uh, who deal with the fitness and sports and exercises is the running form analysis uh, collaboration with Myotest. It's public information, it was announced in, in, in 2020, uh, where you analyze uh, the, 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 the symmetry of the run, or all the major parameters uh, that, that are important to runners. This is kind of an example uh, to that. Uh, in general, we analyze wellness uh, and fitness that, it's, that is important uh, for exercise in general. For example, uh, your, uh, the quality of your sleep. Um, we, we can analyze besides the regular, you know, heart rate and uh, maybe heart rate variability. We also have blood pressure, which was... Uh, uh, past the Korean FDA. We have a lot of these uh, parameters which kind of go on this uh, continuum of what we call from wellness to fitness to, to health, all this continuum. Um, it is a, a high-end uh, high high device. 
uh, but in general, I think we look to expand more, not only focus on the watch. We have also a very high-end uh, uh, earbuds, uh, the Galaxy Buds Pro. This is the, really the, the latest one. So, so with time, we look to add more capabilities, more sense, and more feedback. And I hope we'll see, with the years, we'll see more and more of that. Amazing. So you can send me one. Uh, I'll be delighted, and to the rest of the team. Or as we say on our events, 50% for all, contact Adi later on, and he will deliver the message. Okay, jumping uh, to you, Igor. Aero is uh, another leading, uh, uh, I would say, uh, brand in the sensors and wearable. Can you please share a little bit with us about Aero? I worked with Aero a lot, a lot when I used to work for Indiegogo International. All my B2C consumer, I would say, uh, electronics products uh, went through Aero. Tell us a little bit about Aero and what could be the potential of working with the company to help entrepreneurs build their pathway in this industry. Hey, thank you, Oren. Hi, everybody. Happy to be here. Uh, well, um, Aero was founded as a small radio part shop in Manhattan in 1935. Uh, it grew a little bit since then. Uh, in 2021, Aero is the largest global distributor of hardware. Uh, we have uh, around uh, 200, uh, 200 uh, branches all over the world. Uh, Aero is a company of around $30 billion uh, in annual revenue. It's in a, in a Fortune 100 list. Um, and uh, we have made uh, quite a large transformation from being a warehouse or a box mover uh, to an engineering uh, slash technology company. Um, Why my colleagues here, well, uh, Adi from Samsung, they are they are designing and making the chips and the and the components. And why when when Tower Jazz are uh, the foundry that that actually um, putting them on wafers and uh, uh, working with silicon, Aero is the uh, the company that delivers the parts to the customers and this is this is our main uh, issue as a logistics team we we just uh, let's say let's say simply put it we buy parts from manufacturers and we sell them to the customers yeah this is very basic and uh, and real explanation well but as i mentioned mentioned uh, above that we're an engineering company we're making um uh, we're making uh, technology solutions and uh, most important for this meeting is that Aero is supporting startup companies and uh, during their um, all of them when they are young, uh, exactly after the Orica moment, we provide them with the development boards, with the part samples, with engineering support, uh, and we help them to design to design uh, their products. All 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 those all, all that I mentioned is uh, uh, bears absolutely no cost for the company, which is a. a which, which, which is a huge plus for the for the startup company that usually looking for money and, and saves the money. Um, we support the companies all over the all over the way uh, because our because we intend to uh, to be partners with them. And once they go to the market and they sell, only then we want to enjoy the success. So let's say we, we want to partner with them, um, starting from the very early moment and up to the market. We have all the logistics, well, all the, all of the engineering resources, and uh, of course we have the parts. You're on mute, Oren. Yes, thank you, Igor. Thank you very much for that. So, talking about startups and Eureka movement, I would like to approach Ziv. Tell us a little bit about Xtrode's uh, technology and the way you use sensors to improve performance. We also have several other amazing companies. I know at the audience. Uh, dealing with performance and dealing with the athlete development side, again, around the, the hardware uh, companies I work with, iBrand, so I know Costa is here with us. Hi, Costa. So, Ziv, uh, directly to you, please. Thank you, Oren. First of all, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I will be glad to show you some of the user aspect of a uh, sensor for Sportec. I will share several slides. So basically, extra in a Sportec, uh, Israeli Sportec technology company, they develop a unique sensors in order to measure uh, the direct activity of the muscle. Our vision is to understand and predict our own body. It's a self-test that we can use it anywhere and anytime, as you can see in this picture. Basically, we develop what we call the electronic skin. It's a skin patch 
a wearable technology, totally wireless, that can measure biopotential, the electrical signal of our body, and transfer it either to our smartwatch or smartphone and then to the cloud. With such a patch, we can measure multiple uh, physiological signals. We can measure the brain activity. We can measure eye movement. We can measure the heart activity with ECG. And the most important for sport, we can measure a direct measure of EMG that we can extract information about muscle fatigue, muscle symmetry, and muscle synchronization. All this information we can measure with a single sensor. And with such abilities, we, we can provide an objective indoor and outdoor tool for monitoring uh, athletes and boost performance and well being. We can use this tool for multiple sports fields and multiple users. And the basic idea is to start with expert and then to expand it to a mass market for consumer. The several uses that we have in sport are to measure and optimize training and performance, to prevent injury, to give information about muscle fatigue and give you notification when you increase the chance for injury, and after injury, to use it as a direct measure of your injured muscle in order to shorten the rehabilitation process. And that will be the last slide to show what a, a, a a, a demonstration or a, a, an example of what a, a, does a sensor of, a, for sports platform looks like. So as you can see, we have our unique sensors. We connect it to what we call data acquisition unit. This is the sensors that we had to develop with mainly SD card, Bluetooth device, and a, a battery. The transfer the information to a mobile device. And with the mobile device, we connect the cloud where all our analytics, AI and machine learning analytics uh, conducted. Then we transfer the information back to either the phone or the smartwatch and provide the athlete with the information. So here is just a, a small example how a, a sport tech sensor company uh, looks like. Thank you, Ziv. Thank you very much for sharing. Uh, it's amazing to see the growth of the company, and I'm sure that it's just the beginning. Uh, passing to Dr. Sabine with us, let's start by putting some context here. What are you doing as the head of LA, LZ, LZ Secure Systems? Okay, thank you. Uh, so the uh, LZ, so it's the high performance center in, uh, in English. Uh, for Secure Intelligent Systems is a collaboration between industry partners and also academic partners and uh, six Braunhofer Institutes where we um, develop the whole system integration uh, from sensor to cloud. That means we go for sensor development, component development. It can be semiconductor based, but also all other materials based uh, components and integration into flexible systems using polymer electronics. Um, I'll be happy to tell you more about that, especially also about our materials collaboration with the tower chest. Um, and so at the end, we also can deal with the data handling, data security issues for several applications. We are located in Munich. Yeah. Amazing. Hopefully to meet you soon. Yes, this would be great. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for that, Sabine. And of course, we'll be back to you soon. Um, Thank you. Going back to our friends from Samsung. So we know that wearables are making huge impacts on the both professional, but on the amateur sports. Um, what can you share with us that will actually uh, will will bring us and will will uh, 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 let us know and and acknowledge us? about the impact of sensors on athletes' life from the professional ones to the amateur sports? Um, so Samsung uh, mostly focused on, on, on the mass market, on, uh, on the consumer and the hundreds of millions. So if we do some professional sports activities, it's usually like uh, marketing PR. So we mostly look at, at amateurs, running being... Uh, Kind of the the golden fitness type that we focus on. We do uh, look a bit at ball games, 
but 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 still it's very kind of fr fragmented it's not as general as as like running running form analysis we we did look into classifications of sports activities which exist for for many years uh in terms of as i said in terms of what it, it provides so I, I think actually the most of the benefit that will that a professional uh, athlete or an amateur will get is actually the, the other stuff i said not not only the sports analysis but all all the the, as I said, the sleep uh potential we look at things around uh, dieting for general population but sleep dieting um recording is uh, is physiological parameters of course uh things we look into things like uh, vo2 max obviously which are more related to uh, uh to athletes uh all, all of these things um but, but i think kind of the, this holistic approach this is something that uh, really makes uh, something special maybe you know, maybe one of the our largest competitors but this holistic approach to monitor and to, to feedback on, on everything you do it has to do with the way you you live a lot and, and this goes a lot into how professional, both professional and amateur athletes conduct. Thank you very much, Eli. Igor, so in your opinion, seeing a lot of technologies then ca can come together for the use of athletes. And again, um, according to my uh, experience working with Aero, what do you see from a macro level, uh, I would say point of view, could be the biggest advantage or challenges for athletes in this world of sensors? Um, well, basically, modern sports is all about sensors, and that's how we see it. Um, uh, Aero basically covers um, various sensors area. We have uh, more than 1,000 manufacturers in portfolio. Uh, so we, uh, when you speak about accelerometers and gyroscopes that uh, detect the athlete measurement, uh, athlete uh, movement measurement, and uh, about positioning sensors such as GPS, B, Bluetooth, and uh, ultra wideband sensors that uh, uh, locate the, the athletes or let's say accessories positions in space, whether it is indoors or outdoors. We can talk about uh, um, uh, vital body sign sensors such as CCG, EEG, heart rate. All those are of course uh, helping the athletes to, to be prepared to the to the, to the, to the professional sports and uh, and. Uh, uh, we can we can talk about uh, video image sensors uh, for um, video tracking for analytics for uh, augmented reality for virtual reality. All those let Igor, basically let are. Let me challenge amazing. you. Let me challenge you yeah. because there is a question from the crowd, and you know usually I like to challenge even earlier, but it took me a while. So Amit David, which is a, a good friend, as a, a serial entrepreneur, and and also use, uh, used to be a CEO of uh, a well-known company in the field, asked a question to the panel. So many sensors create so much data. We know the challenge with big data. The user is puzzled with all this wealth. I'm reading, but usually doesn't know what to do with it. What are you doing to create practical, actionable data for your users? So it's a question both potentially for you, Igor, or also Ziv and, and Dr. Sabine and Adi, if you would like to, to take this. It's not planned as the question that I prepare in advance, but it's a good one. What do we do with all this data? Uh, if, I, if I might just answer for Aero, um, I, I just wanted to define Arrow's, Arrow's goal in this in this issue. We want we want to take the hardware development and hardware parts on us, and we want to allow the customer to deal with the core with this core uh, technology with this IP. In this case, uh, usually in most cases, the IP is the the, the cloud the, the cloud uh, an, uh, analytics and the algorithms, and we are not there. So uh, we are letting let, let's let's allow the customer to take care of that, and Arrow will take care of the hardware. Sure. I'd be glad to address yeah, it. Please. At least from our point at Axtrod, we understood from the beginning that the sensors are the enablers. So we had from day one also to build a cloud infrastructure with analytics learned in order to deal with this massive data. And I think uh, at least for a sport tech company in our fields, we must uh, work in two main vectors. One is the sensors, and the second one is analytics layer that allow us to extract meaningful feature and to get understanding of, I will call it biomarker or actionable information that we could reflect for the user. 
So I think today, and this is part of the challenges that we have, that we need sensor, but sensor with abilities also to connect with either to have a, a strong analysis on premises or to, uh, to have a very good and stable connection to the cloud in order to connect the sensor with the ability of uh, perform and advanced analytics. Thank you, Ziv. So Ziv, Ziv, you picked, and I will follow maybe with a follow-on question to you. Why can't you use medical sensors for sports? What are the special requirements for sports uh, sensors as you see it? Yes. Actually, when we started, we tried to, to build our platform and our technology with what is available for medical. However, once we start to use the current solution for medical, we understand that from price point, we won't be able to, uh, to develop a, a platform that we will be able to bring to consumer because it's too costly. And we understand that uh, because of the uh, regulation and the processes for all these technologies that related to medical, it will increase our uh, development cycles uh, in, I think, in cycles that won't be competitive to the field of uh, sports and uh, wellness. So we understand that we need something different, not with all the uh, abilities of medical, but something fast and simple and uh, affordable that we can move and bring to the consumer. Thank you very much. So Sabine, to follow on that, we always ask ourselves, what's the future with sensors and development? And of course, you know, following uh, Avi's uh, uh, opening with power, uh, uh, I would say wide landscape of development, but how do you see, or where do you see the challenges of, if, of the improvement of these sensors in general? Yeah. And how is it, I would say applying or what is the impact on sports? Yeah, uh, so thank you. First of all, uh, it's all about sensors as all of us said, but uh, what we uh, believe in is that there's a, a great opportunity to really go for new kinds of sensors and use new technologies that are more or less not really good established for the, um, for the use in real applications. Um, of course, uh, it's always also related to the data handling, what was already was answered the question, but the real challenge is to, to bring uh, sensors that um, use technologies like we, for example, do with the tower in the gas sensing area, yeah, that work very well in lab uh, environment, and uh, to find opportunities and solutions for that kind of sensors to really work in the field under not uh, standardized conditions. That's a real challenge. So and to jump on that, yeah. to jump to jump on that, what is yeah. actually the real uh, reliability of these sensing technologies? Because I can tell you that two years ago I was at the innovation hub at FC Barcelona, and there was one guy from one of the two biggest uh, soccer uh, organization worldwide, and he said that they measured uh, in a specific game in last World Cup the results of three companies, the leading companies, uh, in terms of the distance of the old group. And the, the, the margin was <clears throat> huge, to say the least. So uh -huh. one team, the, the margin was, was over 15%. I'm, saying, okay. I'm talking about the big brands. So what is actually the, the real, real reliability of these, these sensors? Yeah, uh, mostly. What we see is really the, the way how you can uh, read out your data. So in our case, it's, uh, we, we work with new kinds of materials and our goal is to do a multi-parallel detection of several gases for the, for example, for stress analyzers, stress detection and all the other things that will be very interesting. And what we do is really the very, um, detailed characterization in the lab and to compare it with uh, real life scenarios. And then we end up again, as we already said, it's all about the data that will be collected. And uh, we will do some internal referencing and the better your uh, readout devices were, or are, and that's why I'm really happy to be with Tower in that development, uh, the better you can be with your new materials because this is really the most important thing at the end. Selectivity, sensitivity, yeah. Thank you very much. Thank so, you. 
I had, I had an interview a week ago to one of the Israeli uh, papers asking how the next Clásico is going to be. Like 2025, imagine Barcelona playing against Real Madrid. What is going to be the use of technology watching a Clásico, watching a Super Bowl or watching, you know, Formula One? So I, was, I tried to, to, to kind of imagine how it's going to look like from a security point of view from a payment point of view, from seeing the players, you know, that you really like and follow from betting point of view. And I think that almost in each one of these topics, uh, uh, I saw that sensors is quite dominant. So five year, years from now, Adi, Igor, Ziv and Sabine, I would like to hear your vision. If you can take two minutes, how in five years from now, you will see the impact of sensors and the, the sensors that we're going to see in the sports industry. Maybe we'll start with you, Adi. Great. So, so I think in terms of uh, sensors will be part of it. Well, what we're you're talking about is the experience uh, of how we're going to view, uh, view the, the next match. So we're seeing for several years now some of these examples, uh, like, uh, like, I don't know, volumetric display, like uh, in, engaging yourself in, uh, in the game. Uh, focused sound. Uh, I think with time and historically, we, we want to see a lot of uh, uh, statistics on the players. So, assuming the players will be monitored, maybe you'll, you, you, you're gonna see you're gonna see it. You're gonna see like uh, the players how much effort they, they put in, or maybe you'll see uh, I don't know. You'll see some levels of uh, some statistics, statistics about them that not only the match, but his performance, his physical performance relative to himself, relative to other games. So you'll have for like huge fans, you'll have the opportunity to, to get more uh, kind of more engagement with the game. Um, and sensors, of course, will be part of it, both on the player and both on the way you capture the game itself. So we won't see it. everything. Of course, it's, it's a bit imaginative, but we'll probably see more kind of uh, engaged viewing of the game. That's my opinion, at least. Yeah, I would, I would agree with the D. Uh, and I, I also think that uh, augmented reality will have a big, a big part in this. Uh, we'll be able to see um, statistics on a, on, a, on a TV screen. And another thing that I think that is also, I mean, it's already emerging that you will be able to see the game from multiple point of view. Let's say that every every player will have a camera on him, and you'll be able to to switch between the cameras. So imagine if you can see the goal from a, a from a goalkeeper's point of view. I think it will be great, and it's uh, it's already um, becoming becoming a reality. Um, about about uh, um, ECG rates and vital signs, I think I think it, it also a, a very very important part um because because players are getting getting hurt if they are you know over overrun and over um do things so i guess that um the coach will be able to see whether the player is uh, is uh, is too tired and will replace him let's say in, in, in basketball and it will prevent injuries so uh, vital signs uh, augmented reality and uh, different points of view thank you very much igor sabine Yes, I agree, and also want only to add that I think it will be much more personalized sensors. It will be in the daily life of much more people, not only for the professional. We already know that it's here, but it's, uh, the people will learn much uh, to work much more with the self-control and sensing their own parameters, and uh, I think they will, they will integrate it much more in their daily life in the future. And it will be a combination between the wellness and well-being and also the health monitoring stuff. I'm pretty sure about that. Thank you. Ziv, your stage now. Whatever you say now will make a huge impact on our next five years to come. This is the final countdown, so please. I like it. Uh, in our field, I think the sensor will come seamless. It will be part of your activity and you would and, and you won't notice it. I think in profession sport, it will improve dramatically. The, uh, it will reduce dramatically the number of injuries and will allow us to get to a peak performance. Uh, but I think uh, on top of the professional sports, it will be also part of 
each one of us daily life. So I do think that this tool will become a, a daily tool for most of us. Either it when we go to jogging or go to play basketball with, friend, with friends and so on. It will be a daily tool in order to keep our well-being and improve our uh, wealth and uh, well-being. So I do think it will be part of our daily activity. Amazing. So with that, first of all, I would like to thank the great panelists, Sabine, Adi, Igor, Ziv. I would like to thank our main partners for this event and supporting us and having this great talk. Our semiconductors, Yaakov for the amazing talk. Uh, Avi, I'm sorry for the amazing talk. Yaakov and Ruti that actually this event, Ruti is an outcome of you that uh, took an active position in Colosseum education. And through the education, we learned a lot because uh, Dr. Ruti Shima brings a lot of experience in sensors. She took a course, the STM course, as part of our activity and through that we started talking about sensors and then we said okay how come we don't do something that is a bit more i would say uh, meaningful and as a deep knowledge around sensors and the the, the impact on sports so ruti this is thank to you uh, through being in our uh, uh, education system and we invite you all to to join us for that so i would like to thank the amazing guests that took the the last 60 minutes to spend with us to connect and network. I'll give uh, the stage to you to change contacts and put your LinkedIn for one more minute. And I would like to thank finally for my, to my amazing team, to Tomer, Fernanda, Tal, and the rest of the team that is working with us on these events. It's great to see you all. And it's amazing to see that 103 people joined an event around sports and sensors. It just shows how important it is and it just shows what is the opportunity for the future? So, Ruti, thank you for that. And thank you all for joining. And we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thank and you very much. Tel Aviv. Thank, bye you. Bye. thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you.